people say to writers all the time, where do your ideas come from? And you can talk and talk and talk and talk, but in the end you have to go, well, they come from in here. Our heads are astonishing. There's a really simple thing you can do with your head, which I think is amazing, but it's so easy. And you have a look at how big your head is. Put your hands around your head. And then you hold in front of you how big your head is. Are you doing that? And then you think, my head, it's tiny. It's not even as big as a football. Compared with the size of this room, it's tiny. Compared with the size of Glasgow, it just couldn't be seen. Compared with the size of everybody that's out there. But then you think, what's inside that head? Everything that's happened to you since you were born, all the stories you've heard, all the dreams you've had. You can think about what's happening on Mars. You can think about what might happen 10,000 years in the future. You can look at stars at night that are billions of miles away, that are millions of years in the past, and they come into your head. So your head that's that big is actually one of the most immense and amazing things in the whole universe. And you carry it around on your shoulders. It's amazing. So when people say, where do ideas come from? Next time somebody says, where are you going to get a good idea from? Out of here, because it's filled with amazing stuff. And when I'm doing this with my notebooks, what I'm doing is getting the stuff out of my head onto the page and turning it into stories. So that's something about my technique. And in the end, it produces books. It produces books. And these are the things which come out. You know, the things that I think I've loved since I was a little boy, the things I loved in the library, the things I grew up to love, the things I love now. How many people really like books? How many people like reading? It's fantastic. How many people out there like reading? A really interesting thing happens to you when you write for young people. People say to you, say, what do you do? I say, I'm a writer. I say, oh, that's interesting. And I say, what do you write? And I say, well, I write a lot of books for young people. And you know what people often say? Ah, young people. They don't read anymore, you know. What I want to do to those people is to bring them to meet people like you and people like you who know so much about books, who still love books, who still love stories, who know so much about writers. If I ask a question, who are your favorite writers? Put your hand up and s who's got favorite writers? Yeah. J.K. Rowling. J.K. Rowling. Anyone else with favorite writers? Uh, Anthony Horowitz. Anthony Horowitz. Ian Blyton. Ian, Ian Blyton. Anyone else? And out there, there are thousands of ri famous writers, well-known writers who are being talked about. People say books are dying. People say people don't read anymore. It's absolute rubbish. Because people like to pretend, oh, things are getting worse and worse. And kids of today aren't interested in books. And we have thousands of people watching this today because they are interested in books. Because they're interested in books. So my books, I'm here. Um, this book has just come out. And this book has just come out. The paperback of this book has just come out. This book is called My Name is Mina. And My Name is Mina is a, um, a prequel. A prequel to a book called Skellig. My name is Mina, is about a girl who is really interested in writing herself. I think because I'm a writer, I'm really interested in words. Mina is really interested in words as well. She's interested in the power of words. Now, the power of words, we think, oh, yeah, words are really powerful. Here's the amazing thing about words. I'll give you a word, right? I'll give you a word. I'll give everybody out there a word. It's just four letters long, right? And it's just like a black mark on a, on a page. Here's the word. And what I want you to do, and you out there as well, when I give you the word, just keep it as a word. Don't let it become anything else. Here's the word, right? T, e, n, t, tent. Put that in your mind. Keep it as a word. Just keep it as a word. Stop it being anything else. Can you do that? What happens to the word when you put it in your head? What happens to it? What happens to the word in your head? Yeah, you imagine that it's at, you're outside, like maybe camping in yeah. the tent. You start thinking about things like camping. What does the word become? Yeah. The object itself. It becomes the object itself. Yeah. 
you get a lot of ideas into your mind about what's happening. Lots of ideas around tents just got coming into your mind. And that's just one word. One word like tent turns into a picture, it turns into memories, it turns into things like smells, it turns into ideas, it turns into a huge amount of stuff. And it's just one word. And then you think, how many words are there in a book? Thousands and thousands. So each time you read a word, it makes your brain do astonishing things. And that's the power of words.